Thank you very much for that warm welcome. It is a great pleasure to join you tonight. I know the dialogue at this Congress is going to be provocative. And what you'll experience behind the wheel on Belle Isle will be jaw-dropping. Some of you already know, but you have come to Detroit at a critical time. Long, vacant skyscrapers are being brought back to life. Public and private partnerships are launching massive building projects, and there is definitely a bias for action, and it's taking hold. It's inspiring and, I believe, transformative. Waves of energy like this come in cycles, and they create windows of opportunity where vision and leadership are rewarded. It's true in cities, and it's true in an industry like ours. If you recognize what's going on, if you think big, and if you ask your engineers to innovate, then you can change the world not in cautious steps, but in great leaps forward. I think the global auto industry is in one of these innovation cycles. And at GM, we have a renewed passion, we have the financial resources, the technology, and the talent to think big, to step up our investments, and to take calculated risks. But where should we focus? For my part, I'm listening for customer insights. And whether you're listening to people in LA or Beijing, what they want is clear. They want unfettered personal mobility. More specifically, they expect us to help mitigate, if not eliminate, the congestion, the pollution, and the traffic accidents that, that are the downside of automobiles. To me, these aren't noble causes. They're imperatives. If we expect our industry to thrive well into the future, we have to provide solutions. To do that, we have to be passionate and fearless advocates for safety technologies, like vehicle-to-vehicle -vehicle communication, vehicle-to-infrastructure communication, and ultimately, fully autonomous driving. No other suite of technologies offers so much potential for good, and it's time to turn that potential into reality. That's why I'm announcing today that GM will put the first V2V enabled car on the road in about two years. What's more, I'm announcing that we will bring in advanced, highly automated driving technology to the market in this same time frame. We're not doing any of this for technology, for the sake of technology itself. We're doing it because customers around the world want it, and not just GM owners. That's why I'm asking all of you to accelerate your work in this field. If we make bold moves together, then our generation will stand on the shoulders of engineering giants like Charles Kettering and Henry Ford and E.G. Toyota. I know we can do it. Today is really a milestone on a long journey. In the video you just saw, you caught a glimpse of the concept car called the Firebird 2. It was one of a series of GM concepts from the 1950s, like the LeSabre, that explored technologies that could advance the state of the art. It's fascinating to look back and see how these concepts showcased innovations that are commonplace in today's world, including adaptive lighting, downsized and boosted engines, alternative fuels, and lightweighting materials. Every detail was designed to impress. But then the studios had to stretch their imaginations. Think about it. The Boeing 707, the polio vaccine, the cathode ray tube. Innovation was a daily part of life in the 50s. The Firebird 2 was a showcase for GM's most innovative thinking about the hot transportation topic of the day, congestion. Congestion was such a big issue that GM actually created a Better Highways essay contest, and we offered a $25,000 prize to those people who came up with the best solutions to plan and pay for the safe and adequate highways we need. The New Yorkers here should be able to guess who won. It was Robert Moses. He built 416 miles of parkways in the New York area during his long career. His prescription was a $50 billion campaign to build smart roads, a vast network of limited access freeways with uniform design, speed limits, and lighting. GM's cross-country parade of progress showed how this would work. 
It featured a huge mobile display with more than 1,000 miniature buildings and 1,500 model cars and trucks. One side showed a city choked with congestion. The, other revolving, the panels then revolved and turned over to show how we could make better roads that would make this problem go away. The Fireboard 2 took the solution several steps further. It cruised on superhighways with dedicated high-speed safety lanes. And when conditions were right, the driver could engage a fully autonomous mode and let Mission Control pilot the vehicle. Simply stated, the Firebird 2 was intelligent and connected, even if some of its technology was science fiction. Today, intelligent and connected is an engineering reality. It's exactly the right path for us to follow as we build the next generation of vehicles and roads around the world. So how should we move forward? Let's start with the concept of intelligent cars, because our first responsibility is to keep making vehicles smarter in order to reduce crashes and injuries. Then we can weave in connectivity and the opportunities that open up with connectivity. Everyone here will agree that cars are more intelligent than they used to be. During the last 10 years, we have leveraged radars, cameras, sensors to support an incredible range of active safety features. However, crashes still occur too frequently. The toll on society is unacceptable, and it's a global problem. The United Nations and the World Health Organization say that vehicle crashes cost countries anywhere between 1% and 3% of the GMP every year, and this is staggering. We can't let the numbers disguise the fact that we're talking about people and families. That's why doing something is a responsibility that every GM brand embraces. Almost 20 years ago, we introduced OnStar Connected Vehicle Services. Today, our advisors respond to more than 13,000 emergency requests per month in North America alone. Now we're growing aggressively in China, Mexico, and expanding into Europe next year. We're also expanding the availability of adaptive lighting, rear vision cameras, blind zone monitoring, and lane keeping. And we're adding more nameplates that offer adaptive cruise control and crash imminent braking. Many of these technologies will provide the foundation for something at General Motors we call Super Cruise. That's the working name for the GM semi-automated driving technology that allows for hands-free driving on the highway at speed and in stop-and-go driving. We started demonstration drives back in the spring of 2012, and since then we've refined the system through thousands of hours on the road and in our driving simulator, which is the ultimate Xbox. In 2013, popular mechanics ranked Super Cruise among the year's most important innovations, and they thought it might be in production as early as 2018. Well, we're going to better that by two years. We will launch Super Cruise in the same time frame as V2V, and it will appear in an all-new Cadillac that will enter a segment where we don't compete today. With Super Cruise, when there's a congestion alert, you can let the car take over and drive hands-free and feet-free through the worst stop-and-grow traffic. And if the mood strikes you on wide open roads, you can take a break from wheels and pedals and let the car do the work. Having it done for you, that's true luxury. But rest assured, Super Cruise will keep drivers alert and engaged. And when they want to take control, they're going to find a car that's exceptionally fun to drive. The next big challenge to tackle is the urban environment, where you have to dodge everything from jaywalkers to bike messengers to delivery trucks. It will take a 360-degree look and risk detection and incredibly powerful software. GM and Carnegie Mellon University demonstrated this when our fully autonomous Chevy Tahoe won the DARPA Urban Challenge in 2007. We call it the boss, and it navigated 60 miles of mixed traffic, intersections, stop signs, 20 minutes faster than the next runner-up. Commercializing fully automated vehicles may take until the next decade, but the work we've done so far has given us invaluable insights into things like sensor fusion, which we use today on vehicles like the Cadillac CTS. 
Each new project has advanced state-of-the-art and some of our latest thinking is captured in our research vehicles that you'll be able to drive on Belle Isle. They include an automated Opal insignia equipped with GPX, six LiDAR sensors in the bumpers, and both V2V and V2I technology. We will also showcase an innovative vehicle to pedestrian technology that can warn drivers about the presence of people like construction workers, even if they're hidden from view. In addition, we have brought an autonomous derivative of our Chevrolet NV urban mobility concept, which was tailored from the, for the world's mega cities and campus settings. The NV is powered by electricity and it takes minimal space and can transport two people in all weather and city road conditions. This makes it a natural evolution of our original NV concept. A few minutes ago, I talked about congestion warnings, which are a daily part of life in so many cities around the world. In Los Angeles, they're called SIG alerts. They are issued for an unplanned event that causes the closing of one lane of traffic for 30 minutes or more. SIG alerts are nightmare scenarios because even a fender bender can cause a traffic backup for miles. The SIG alert backstory is fascinating. In 1955, a former Army communications engineer named Lloyd Sigmund invented a system that enabled police dispatchers to transmit a radio tone that could be picked up by special receivers at the local radio stations. The stations could then broadcast the message to listeners in a matter of seconds. SIG alerts were ingenious, but were on the cusp of something better, the high volume rollout of vehicle to vehicle connectivity. In the United States, the President and the Department of Transportation have been clear. V2V is one of their highest priorities because they believe it is game changing. Japan and the European Union have also made deploying this technology a priority, and there's growing interest in China as well. Everyone recognizes that when cars can talk to each other and share information, we will save lives, we'll save time, and we'll save money as well. When cars can talk to the infrastructure, the benefits will rise exponentially. For example, a Vita I enabled red light won't hold up traffic when it's not needed. And highly accurate traffic updates will help further reduce congestion, which we all know creates driver frustration and waste. When it comes to driver frustration, researchers at York University and Toyota gave this clinical assessment. As your car slows to a crawl, your heart rate picks up, your breathing intensifies, and your blood pressure shoots up. If this sounds like a precursor to a heart attack, you're not too far off. Then there's the natural wasted time of, and natural resources. The Texas Transportation Research Institute reports that congestion causes urban Americans to travel 5.5 billion more hours and purchase an extra 2.9 billion gallons of fuel each year. But Americans aren't alone. In fact, there are 11 European countries that are more congested than the United States. And the gridlock in places like Beijing can dwarf even the biggest traffic jams in the United States. At GM, we are so convinced of the safety and other benefits of connected cars and so impatient for the future to arrive that we are acting now. For starters, OnStar is launching the industry's largest deployment of 4G LTE mobile broadband. More than 30 of our 2015 models will be equipped with 4G LTE. But this is about more than offering customers a built-in Wi-Fi hotspot. The pairing of OnStar with high-speed mobile broadband will serve as a platform for future innovations in safety and customer care. And I'm announcing the next major steps in the intelligent and connected journey right now. Cadillac will build GM's first V2V equipped car in the 2017 Cadillac CTS in about two years. Thanks to V2V, OnStar, and a full suite of active safety features, we believe that the CTS will be one of the most, if not the most, intelligent and connected production vehicle on the road. It will talk to other V2V equipped cars to avoid crashes. It will talk to V2I Im equipped infrastructure to reduce congestion. And its 4G LTE connection and active safety features will give drivers peace of mind. 
Being at the Vanguard, we clearly have a lot of work ahead of us, but we will put the time to good use by accelerating our vehicle engineering efforts, engaging with regulators around the world, and most importantly, talking to customers. I'm convinced customers will embrace V2V and automated driving technologies for one simple reason. They are the answers to everyday problems that people want solved. Starting the conversation with Cadillac will help us establish the science and engineering with luxury customers who are incredibly influential. But that's truly just the beginning. The sooner the industry puts a critical mass of V2V equipped vehicles on the roads, the more accidents we'll prevent and the more society will benefit. The same holds true for V2I. I see V2I as a natural complement to the active traffic management projects in Europe in countries like England, Germany, Greece, and the Netherlands. For example, the M4 and M5 smart motorways near Bristol, England now include things like variable speed limits and dynamic lane markings. One of the newest smart highway projects is in California. It's a high-tech makeover of I-80 in the East Bay, which is San Francisco's region's lousiest commute. They're deploying a vast network of sensors, cameras, and people to collect and assimilate and communicate information about the freeways and major side streets. The goal is to sharply reduce the 2,000 crashes that happen in this, e this area every year. Now imagine how much more impactful this project could be if all those cars were actually communicating instead of being islands unto themselves. The U.S. Congress can help pave the way for V2I by including funding in the next transportation bill and more research on V2I infrastructure development. In addition, we need more public-private partnerships to demonstrate the benefits. This brings me to my final announcement of the day. GM is joining forces with the Michigan Department of Transportation, the University of Michigan, and other automakers to create V2I-enabled corridors on 120 miles of Metro Detroit's roadways. When completed, it will be the largest deployment of V2I technology in the United States and one of the largest in the world. In closing, let me go back to the Firebird 2. Looking at it from today's vantage point, the lesson is clear. It always pays to listen to the customer and then look over the horizon. That's what Boss Kett, the legendary GM research chief, meant when he said, there will always be a frontier when there is an open mind and a willing hand. Nearly 60 years ago, a group of designers and engineers listened to customers talk about problems like congestion and they knew the traffic would only get worse if left unchecked. They also heard people talking about how much they loved to travel by car and how great it would be if their vehicles could do some of the work on part of the trip. It was clear to everyone that they wanted safer roads and safer cars for their families. The Firebird 2 concept team dreamed of intelligent and connected technologies that could meet all of these needs but they didn't have the hardware or the software to make their vision come true. We do. Thanks to the global ITS network, our consortium partners in North America and Europe, our tier one suppliers from around the globe, and our academic partners in places like Carnegie Mellon, Stanford, the University of Michigan, Virginia Tech, and others. Now we need to bring it to the market and we need to do it quickly. Let's show the world the science, technology, and innovation that's fueled by our imaginations. Let's follow in the footsteps of the engineers who invented three-point seatbelts, airbags, and stability control. Let's strive to build cars and trucks that don't crash. Let's connect our vehicles, and let's do it together and make a real difference for all of our customers. Thank you very much.